Hey everybody, today we are going to look at this BenQ HT1085. This was sent in by a viewer who is having trouble with the uh, lamp igniting, if I remember correctly. It arrived uh, the other day, and I did not have time to look at it yet, so now that I'm relatively caught up, this is a good time to check it out. So as I said, this is an HT1085 power cord ready. Before I start it, we're going to open the lamp section and just take a quick peek at the lamp. I'm pretty sure it's a new lamp. I think uh, they actually, I think the guy actually bought the lamp from uh, my day job. I gotta double check. We'll see once I see the, uh, the lamp, see the stickers on it. Let's get that screw out. Let's see, yes, that looks to be a fairly new lamp, yep, that's from 2020, and looking at that number, this lamp is probably from uh, November or December, 5J, JN05, I'm trying to remember, I forget, J7, N05, something like that. I'll put it up on the screen. Lamp is good. Lamp never started, obviously. Let's just look in here. Oh, a little bit of the foam from shipping got inside, so get that out. It's styrofoam. UPS store did a good job packing it for them, though. Arrived safe and sound. So before I actually go ahead with uh, popping that lamp in, let's just do a, find my flathead here, but let's do a quick check and see how the, uh, the color wheel and everything responds. So the door switch is right here, this guy. I'm going to hold the switch down and then see if I can jam it like that and that'll hold the button down so that we can see if the uh, color wheel spins up get my flashlight it's got some power we're watching right there we want to see that spin fact, let me see if I can make it so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Oh yeah. Spun right up. No problem. Oh, and a bunch of styrofoam got blown out color wheel stopped we should get a failure yep well I kind of think that's supposed to run three times before it fails but maybe that's because the uh, lamp wasn't striking let's pull the power cord normally I wouldn't do that if a lamp was on but being that the lamp wasn't on we're all right so what I think is going on, just, you know, thinking out loud here, this always changes as I keep going, but I suspect this either has a ballast problem or uh, maybe a sensor on the color wheel. But let's just make 100% sure that the lamp doesn't try to fire. Want to make sure we don't see a flash. Nothing. Not even a flash. We're going right to the lamp light. So that tells us something. Take that out. And I hope you guys like the uh, camera position. I am trying a new 
layout that's not in my way. I have the camera to the right and over, so it's looking down where I am. So hopefully it's not as, uh, I don't know, difficult for me to show you what I'm doing. Let's... Let's take this apart. Now we need to know what's going on inside. It is time to put the, uh, the door and that cover out of the way. And then one, two, should clear the top. I'm not taking the back off yet, but if I do, we'll take all that stuff out. All right, that comes off. Now we're looking inside and everything looks okay. Color wheels in right, sensor looks okay, IR, ballast control, power factor input, there's the ballast. Okay, well, first things first, let me make a little room here, let's double check the low voltage power supply. Alright, let's see, let's check our standby first. This looks fine. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong here. This looks good. What we'll do next is we'll fire up the uh, we'll fire up the projector, and then um, we'll see what we have going on on the uh, ballast TTL output here. Let's see, we have yellow, orange, red, brown, black. So we'll start with, let's see, do we have anything? One of these is power into the optocouplers and the rest of these sync, you know, the power comes back and is synced from the opto, opto coupler. Yeah, I hear it. I don't know if you can hear that. Did it, did it, did It's trying to fire the lamp. Actually, I think we have a bad power supply or bad ballast. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Okay, so I have a uh, an extension wire for lamps. This is a connector from a ballast, which I then mounted a lamp plug to. That takes our power from the projector and then sends it through here to another connector, which then ends up here. That is out of another ballast. So when I fire this up, let's see if I can get this tilted. I want you guys to be able to see inside it. We should see a little bit of flickering in here when I fire it up because what it seems like is the ballast is only firing at you know half its voltage maybe let me just get ready to yank this if something goes wrong well I don't even see it in the lamp that's crazy. Instant lamp failure. Wow. All right. 
Let's check the color wheel sensor. Take my lamp adapter out. So I'm going to take the uh, cover off. Let me just get this meter out of the way. Because that, that ticking I hear, it's either a color wheel. I don't know. The color wheel's not ticking. Although it might be. Maybe it's trying to find the speed and it can't. I'm wondering about the sensor. We'll see. I'll find it. I'm not too worried. Nope. See, it's unhook the... What's that? The speaker? Yep. Get that out of the way. Set that over there. Let's get our color wheel sensor out of there. Just... Take a look at that, make sure this connector is okay, because these will come apart sometimes, but that looks all right. And then is that the way that goes? I wonder if the color wheel was plugged in upside down. I seem to recall it being the blue side up. Let's... Uh, can't remember now if I'm trying to... I always mix up blue side and the other side on these. Because I, I think the color wheel was changed in this. I actually should go back and check my notes. I get a lot of emails and I talk to a lot of people. But let's... Let me plug this in the other way. Just that noise, that dee 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 noise it was making is a noise that I know I've heard before, and I, I want to say it's when the color wheel's plugged in backwards. But it also kind of sounds like when a uh, ballast is trying to fire and it can't. But the way I said it goes into immediate failure, like, I seem to again recall that these should try three times before giving up. Let me put the screw back in up here and then this one here too. I want the DMD coming loose and for the heck of it let's just put Mr. Speaker back in. And let's plug in the lamp without the uh, adapter. See, it kind of sounded like the uh, bulb was trying to strike. All right, that's plugged in. Let's put a screw in to hold that. If this is all it was, then fellow is super close and he should be proud of himself for getting that far if this is the uh, color wheel that was changed all right we'll plug it in got our standby lights Yeah, the color wheel's definitely spinning the wrong way. <laughs> All right. Unless I didn't have it plugged in all the way. flip it over. He probably had it in the right way. Yeah. Doesn't go that way. So this is definitely the right way. That's good. Good. 
time. Hmm. Alright, one more time, and then we're going to take it apart the rest of the way. I just want to see that color wheel and see if that's what's making the noise, or if that's the ballast I'm hearing. Alright, let me get my scope. Let's try this again. So it looks like signal is on the right, power's on the left, ground's in the middle. Let's see. Not getting any signal. That color wheel sensor is not does not seem to be responding. Let me go down the two volt scale. We got nothing. All right, that narrows it down a little bit. You saw that we had no. Uh, response from that color wheel so I'm wondering if got a damaged color wheel sensor maybe that's kind of what it seems like let's uh, I think I got to get all the way down there to get that out if I remember correctly it's, it's actually been a while since I've done a color wheel on one of these Sometimes you can get them out, leave all this stuff in, but I'm pretty sure there's screws on the back side of that optic piece. So what we're going to do first is we got to take the back off. So let's pop these fellows loose and then get them out. Five millimeter. about you guys but I'm enjoying the new camera angle so far. It's so much easier for me to work, which means it's easier for me to get good videos for you guys. Alright, this should pop off, yep. glad that so far it's not looking like the ballast because I'd really like it just to be a uh, resoldering or something like that because uh, I'm pretty sure that guy replaced that color wheel I know I keep saying that and I'm probably mixing it up with somebody else I talked to but you know hopefully not all right unplug these Feels fine. All right, so now I should be able to open those two right. All right, set that over there. Then we're going to leave that, but we'll take out. So we are going to take the entire main board out. Set that off to the side. Let's 
see. That's out of the bottom. So is that. And then this one. Now I am going to leave the ground wire attached because I've done this before and it works out fine that you can just set this whole thing just kind of right here, especially if we're only going for that. Being that I don't need to uh, pull the whole power supply out. At least I don't think so. Not yet. We're going to take out just the uh, optical assembly here. See, I'm pretty sure if I take out that screw, the color wheel comes loose, but this metal piece is in the way. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Now that I can... Yeah, there we go. Alright, so this is what we were trying to get out. So I want to check color wheel sensor plugs in huh plugs in there now we'll see and the color wheel right yep and the color wheels right there here's the sensor let's uh, start by removing these two screws this should release the this should release that um, mask right here there we are let's get that out of the way looks all right let's take the color wheel itself off now it should just be the screw yep So that's the index sensor, or the index mark. Oh, i got to hold that straight, Frank. Keep it in this frame. There's the index mark. That's supposed to trigger the sensor. Let's remove, plug the wire. You know, that connector looks funky to me. Does that look kind of funky to you, too? Like it's cockeyed? Like it's torn? <laughs> I'll bet you that's a problem. I'll bet we have a break on the uh, sensor board. Let's see, I'm gonna leave that middle screw in, but we'll take out these two on either side. Actually, let me, uh, I'm gonna put a glove on. There we are. It's because I want to hold the other part with that has the glass, and I don't want to get that, get fingerprints all over it. comes off and then yeah there's our sensor let's get that off and let me just find a safe place for this to live while we look at the board that's the uh, sensor board itself. It wasn't really dirty, but that's no good. Yeah. See? Alright. Let me see if I have one, and if not, we'll solder it up. I looked. I do have, I have another, um, MP612. I've got another BenQ in, in parts that I could probably pull this out of, but here, let me get it close so we can really look at it. All I see wrong are those three points that pulled up and that one on the side. 
So I'm going to solder this because I'd much rather fix what's there because if I don't, this will end up in the trash. And that goes against the whole point of why I do all this. So I'm going to go solder this. I'll be right back. There we go. All soldered up. I got the back and the front. I, uh, let's see how it feels with the wire plugged in. Because that should be way better. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Let's see. Can we unplug it without tearing it off? Yep. Feels good. Alright, so let's put this back together. So this goes on here, and the way this all works is that as the uh, color wheel spins, I know we've gone over this before, but you know, when this little black mark goes by, that's the index mark, that tells the color wheel when the uh, blue segment is lined up with the sensor, so that way it can key the rest of the colors off of that. So we want to put this here to uh, backwards. Yeah. There we are. Come on. backwards. Totally backwards. What are you doing, Frank? Pay attention. The uh, black mark was out. It was not in. See, I start staring at the uh, camera screen too much. But that's okay. As long as I find it before it goes all the way back together, right? Okay, so that's in. This has to go back on. Let me just get a uh, different grip so we can slide that over. Yeah. And then these two screws. in and uh, see what happens. I think we got it though. Alright, that's tight. Let's plug in the sensor wire. I like that. Let's get the optical assembly. This is going to go back in. that. Let me get that screw. Let's see this one. Make sure it's not rubbing or dragging. Make sure it clears the front of the light tunnel and it does. Make sure it wasn't bent. It looks good. It looks good. It looks real good. Now let's put the uh, put the mask back on. Mask, and I guess we could also call that like the lamp mount, being that the lamp screws into that. This one. 
Now I could use the drill on this, but that makes me nervous when I'm that close to the color wheel and other things that could be damaged if the drill came loose. So I'm just going to do these all by hand. I like that. That looks good. Drill out of the way. Let's get the case. Set that over here. Let's just get all these other wires out of the way. So we can get all that, all that styrofoam out. Oh, maybe some cat hair or dog hair. How does the fan look? Actually, the fans all look good in this. He uh, takes good care of it. The blower fan in particular looks really good. So, uh, nice job. You know who you are. Thank you for taking good care of your projector. Let's set this back in. And then we will attach the, uh, the screws. Come on. There we are. Is that down all the way? Yeah. And then to put these screws in, I'm going to do these by hand. Took them out. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'll go down for it. We'll put one in first. The reason I want to do these by hand is I don't want to uh, cut extra threads. It's easier to feel the threads where they start when you do it by hand. There go, right there. Uh, there it is. All right. And then the last one for up here, right there. Okay, that's all in, that's all in, just want to get these extra wires out of the way so that we can reinstall the, uh, this plate and then the main board, and then if we did everything right and I didn't space on anything else, I think we have a high probability on seeing the lamp light. That's all right. third one. One, two. One, two. Oh, almost lost it. Jumped out and I wasn't paying attention. There we are. 
three. All right, so the subassembly superstructure, whatever you want to call it, it's back in. Let's get this in. We're gonna make sure we line up those with that. This actually looks really good. Wow, it's a nice main board. In case anybody needs a picture of an HD 1085 main board. enough to test it because I think it's good so I'm gonna put in all the pieces that we can put in without having to put the uh, metal top back on yet sensor which is important and then speaker which I'll have to unplug when I put the metal back on but that's everybody let's put mr. lamp back in see I think the fact that it just that it failed so quickly that it you know gave us that lamp error so fast it had to be it had to be a sensor that wasn't getting triggered and that just makes sense for the color wheel so I will get the scope out again. Let's see here, let's slide that over a little. Put the scope here. Let me get a ground there. And let's see, I can get, yep, I can get those. All right, and let's put our cheater in. Let me get the power cord. our standby all right so the first thing we will do is hit the power button and uh, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up maybe that'll help hey look at that the lamp came right on <laughs> So there we are. There's our pulses. There we are. There's our pulses. 120 hertz. Seems to be a common setting for uh, color wheels. Probably because it's a 60 hertz signal. But that's good. Uh, you can see we have the light. And... Uh, you can see here I'll slide it back a little bit you can see it shining on my hand that's the uh, menu so that's good what I'm going to do now is we're going to shut it down it's still warming up no it's still warming up all right I'm going to turn it off and then I'll start the video back up and we'll put it back together 
Okay, so we'll set that back on, and then we set this back on. There we go. And then I will put, let's see, I think I'm just going to put one screw in first just to affix the back snugly. Yeah. Then we're going to do the top screws. And I'm going to do those by hand. I don't want to over tighten and spin the metal. Alright, good. Good. Oh, it sounds like I just pushed through my cardboard. I gotta replace my cardboard. It's almost it's time. I should do it about once a year, and it's been about a year. Alright, so that I need one more. Oh, I got the wrong screw in here. The screw, all right, let me just show you guys, because I've done this before. All right, so the screw without the washer on the left, that one, that is the one that goes to the DMD that holds the metal down. It goes right here. The one with the washer does not go here, even though it'll fit. I mean, you could. It, it, what's it matter but you know if you want to do it right which I'm sure you do because you know it's your projector and you want to have it right so the ones with the washers go on the board let's get that speaker wire back over here and then let's get the color wheel dealt with so we're going to gently fold that again and just tuck it down into there and then we'll take the sensor and we'll push that under there too just like that I like that this looks nice all right so now uh, the back a couple more screws for the back so we got our HDMI those are sheet metal sheet metal no machine screw sheet metal is coarse thread with the point on the end and then machine screws are fine thread like that. I mean, there's there's way more fasteners than just that, but, you know, generally. Generally speaking. If your name is Jennifer, and you're speaking generally, are you Jen generally? Or generally Jen? I don't know. If you, anybody out there knows someone named Jennifer, find out for me. Then these guys. Little uh, little fellers for the uh, RS232 and VGA, the DB15. Now I'm using a Phillips head to start them, even though it spins. Just a little bit of friction is enough to get it to grab, because then I can go back with the uh, with the nut driver and finish it in. I find that if you don't start them first, sometimes this is unable to get them started because it's not really pushing, it's just holding on the outsides. So you want to get them kind of, I'll show you, you kind of want to start it and then you can finish it. There we are. Looks good, looks good, looks good. We'll put the top cover back on. I really got to say, the fellow who did this, he does not work on projectors. Uh, he's obviously not an idiot because he was able to follow one of my other videos and did the color wheel. Uh, so, you know, good job, man. Real good job, honestly. But he had a complication that, uh, sensor wire became a problem but that's fine because now I have a video 
that someone else can reference if they have that problem. So, as it is, this all ends up working out well for everybody. I do wish these things weren't so gross, though. It's, uh, it goes here, and it keeps, it keeps the air moving properly, so we will leave it, but I hate how they're so, you know, crusty. So I'll put that on, and we're going to put our lamp door screw in, and I'll pop the uh, bottom screws in, and then we'll fire it up. And that should be uh, a good a good verification and after that runs I will take it over to the other side and we will fire it up over there and I'll let it run for a bit if I get uh, I don't know four or five hours without any issues with it running I think we can consider that repaired and the owner can uh, have it back all right, so I moved the camera so you can, you'll be able to see it. This isn't, we're gonna be testing it, testing it, but this is good for verification before testing. And then what I'll do is I'll move it over to the test area, hook it up to my uh, uh, fireplace video, and then we'll see how it goes. Check that out, we got some video. Let's get it focused. Auto source searching, menu. Focused, zooming out a little. Let's see. I will uh, reset the timer for him though. Let's see. Test pattern. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Oh, high altitude mode is on. Let's let's turn that off unless he lives in a high altitude area, but that'll be up to him. Uh, ah, here we are. Reset lamp timer. Reset. Oops. It's hard to do upside down. <laughs> I should be better at this. Okay, so purple is select. There we are. All right, so now it should say much less hours. Let's see here. Oh. There you are. Equivalent lamp hour zero. But let's turn it off, and I'm going to move it over to the other side, and then we'll see how it looks on the, uh, the big screen. And this is why I test things. Ran for a few minutes. Here we go. And we have a temp warning. Maybe that's why it was in high altitude mode. But either way, we don't want it to have a temp warning. So that means I gotta keep looking. But again, that's why we test them. So let me head back to the bench. Okay, so that shows us that there is something going on. What I'm gonna do first is just make sure we don't have any fans that are sticking or that I possibly forgot to plug in. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure I'd see another warning first, but eh, maybe not. But that's why we test things. You always want to test. Now, the important part is fixed. I suspect that's why it was in high altitude mode. He was probably getting some overheating. And by putting it in high altitude mode, that makes the uh, fan run faster, which will cool things down. Now, this fan is known for problems. feels good and then the blower fans the only other one so let's see how do I want to do this let's 
me look at this fan first because these are known for having problems with the uh, front of the blades. Yeah, it looks okay. They all look okay. I don't think that's it. I don't think it's that one. I think it's the uh, the blower fan, if it's any of them. Now that might have some warped blades, but I, I kind of don't think so. Let's see. And down in there, that's what I'm looking at. Let me see what it feels like. Just going to reach in and... Yeah, I feel all right, but let's take a look. So that means I'm going to, how do I want to do this? I'm debating, do I want to unplug or do I want to test the fans? You know what? Let me put the lamp back in. I want to, uh, we're going to check the service menu and see if there's any fan errors reported in the service menu or see where the temperature was reported. Because you shouldn't have to run it in high altitude mode. I remember correctly that source okay menu in that order that spun up kind of slow you know what let's uh let me Seven. Hmm. No. Nope. Yes, yeah, I thought it was this one, this one, and that. Nope, not that. Okay, well, let's just start checking fans before it overheats. And so there's the blower fan. That's good. And let's check the uh, DMD fan. Yeah, it's running. They're all running. Unless that one's not. That was loose. Let's see. Let's see. Is it this one? No. DMD fan. There we go. And we'll check that little system fan again. I think they call this the, the power supply fan. Alright, so you get 85 hertz on the power supply fan. 86, 85 hertz on the exhaust fan. So again, this is all troubleshooting info if you need it. And then on the blower fan, 120 hertz. And 
And then on the DMD fan, 75 hertz. So that's all four fans. And the projector is staying on. It feels pretty good. I'm going to shut it back down, put the top on, and we'll bring it back over and see what happens. All right, so this projector has a very wide throw lens, so unfortunately I can't quite fit it all on the screen. There's all the old Christmas decorations from a few years ago that never got taken down. Um, but you get the idea. It's a, uh, <laughs> you can see here, there's a better view. Um, you get the idea. That's the uh, fireplace running. So I've had this running for about 10 minutes now and it hasn't shut down. So I'm calling it good, um, at least for now. I'm gonna run it again for another six hours, let it sit overnight and run it for six hours tomorrow. And as long as it runs that six hours, it's good to go. So if you have any questions about your BenQ HT1085 or similar projector, please put it in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching.